Hey everyone, welcome back to another On My Own New Frontier devlog. I'm Kyle Wyke, creator of On My Own, and today I'm excited to share a little bit more of what I've been working on. It's been a while since I've shared an update on New Frontier, and there is a reason for that. A complete rebuild. I'm talking about a brand new code base and a new technical art direction. It's been a long journey, but you know, I didn't want to share anything until I felt like things were a little more tangible. And here it is, the latest build of On My Own New Frontier. In terms of visual direction, it's more aligned with the original On My Own. Just the essentials, but now all in a 3D format. And most of the UI I'm showing here is still placeholder, but the other elements I'm feeling good about moving forward with. If last year was about squaring away the game design direction and making sure we had a clear path ahead, then 2023 has been about exploring the technical side of things and making sure that New Frontier would be able to scale into a larger project. While I was wrapping up the design doc last fall, I started to realize just how much development this new on my own game would need. I evaluated the situation and realized I had a couple options for development. Number one, give away some equity or ownership of the project to help cover some of the development costs, but lose some creative control in the process. Or number two, try to expense it all, but potentially have to cut scope if funds ran out. As I was thinking through those options, another idea popped into my head, something that I've never really given serious consideration to. What if I was able to do some of the programming for On My Own New Frontier myself? Let me take a step back and explain. Eight years ago, when we started making the first On My Own game, I was 100% hands-off from the programming. That work was done by Close Studios, and Chad did a great job of bringing On My Own to life. So while he was doing that, I spent my time doing the art, game design, and other tasks for On My Own and Beecher Interactive, like marketing and doing these videos. While I think it's a fine path to stay focused on a particular trade, I must confess I was a little bit daunted by the whole concept of programming. It wasn't until I started learning to do some web programming at a design job that I started getting more and more comfortable with the idea that this was something that I could do myself. So getting back to New Frontier, I started to think, what if I tried my hand at learning c -sharp programming? Maybe I could cover some of the basic mechanics that are fairly common at this point in the survival genre. And then for the mechanics unique to New Frontier, hire a developer for those. That way we could cover development costs without needing to cut any scope. You know, given the other options, it was worth giving a try. So I decided that each night, once my usual work was done and my family was asleep, I would work on a Unity c -sharp course late into the night. After a couple months, I had made my way through the course and had programmed my first game in c -sharp by myself. I still didn't know how far I'd get with programming on my own new frontier, but I was just taking it one step at a time. Well, literally a week or so after finishing the Unity course, ChatGPT, the text-based AI tool, was launched. I immediately jumped in and started testing it out and realized that, you know, instead of sifting through Google results when having a code problem, I could simply ask ChatGPT to help me understand logic that fell outside of my expertise. So as a still green programmer, I was able to comb through both the original On My Own's code and the New Frontier prototype code to get a good understanding of how things were working on the back end. I had also started researching into some boilerplate code from the Unity Asset Store that could work in covering some of the basic functions in New Frontier. I ultimately concluded that a clean restart for the project was needed. From there, I could use some of the boilerplate code to reference and build off of in order to keep things clean and scalable. And so far, so good. I'm working my way through the various survival game mechanics, like crafting, gathering resources, player movement, animal behavior. Now, it may not all be visually there yet, but it's working on the back end. The UI assets that you see here are placeholder, but I wanted to make sure you guys could see some of the new functionality. There are even some major improvements to the gameplay experience that I've added in this build, like being able to simply click anywhere to move your character, or picking up objects with just a keyboard click. Amidst all this development was an opportunity to reevaluate where we were headed visually with New Frontier. Looking at it with a more critical eye, I find the original prototype build to miss the mark in terms of matching the charm of the original game. 
I started to reflect on what made On My Own visually interesting back in 2016 amidst all these other retro style games, and how best to translate that over to a 2D 3D hybrid. Back then, I was just having fun making these simplified characters without following any sort of pixel art, orthodoxy, or rule set. I think On My Own ended up with a unique style because of that freedom to explore and try different things. Back to New Frontier, I realized the problem with the prototype visuals was mainly due to the overly polygonal 3D assets and some of the contemporary lighting and shading effects we were using. I actually found a retro modeling program called Crocodile 3D that I began experimenting with. With some trial and error, I started to figure out a consistent style for all the 3D assets in the game. While I'm still honing the style and cleaning up the models, I think it's a big improvement in capturing that chill, retro, on my own vibe, but in 3D. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. Now the balance is figuring out what should be a 3D model and what should be a 2D sprite. One option I explored for a bit was an orthographic view, which would keep all the sprites and the models the same size. This would make things look a little more like the original on my own too. But I ended up going with the perspective view because I wanted to have a little bit more depth and freedom with the in-game camera. For the 2D sprites, my animation pipeline has improved too, and I've found a better way to break character animations down in A-Sprite for all the backpackers we have planned. I was using Photoshop for the sprites in the Rekindled update, but like Crocodile 3D, I like the limited scope of A-Sprite with its hyper-focus on sprites and animations. You can see here how I've broken down the backpacker into parts that can easily be updated with new items and colors. Oh yeah, and as you can see here, I'm, I'm working out the details on having a beardless backpacker with short hair. I'm excited to continue adding new backpacker variations to the game so that a variety of players can feel like they have an avatar that represents them. With all the sprites, I've tried to add an appropriate amount of detail and perspective to the characters, animals, and items when necessary, but also stay true to that simplified on my own style. Let's talk a bit about the levels themselves. I'm moving away from the endless procedurally generated biomes and on my own towards more handcrafted regions that have multiple biomes within. So for that, I'm using Unity's Tile Map Editor to easily place all kinds of assets on the map in an efficient manner. This will give each region some character, plus players won't need to go so far out for resources. Some of them will just regenerate naturally. Pretty cool. The eastern region, New Frontier's first large area on the map, is coming together slowly but surely. Each day I'm working to add more items, animals, plants, and maybe even a character or two. More on that someday. Anyways, what do you guys think about the latest build of New Frontier? Let me know down in the comments or over on Discord. And if you have a more technical question, be sure to check out the New Frontier FAQ. I have a link for that in the description below. If you enjoy getting an inside look at the development behind On My Own New Frontier, please consider giving this video a like. Anyways, that's about all I got for today, guys. Thanks again so much for watching, and until next time, take care.